Hi guys, Deanne here from Canada Abroad and thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about working in Canada and what is actually required to get a Canadian work permit. A lot of people always ask us, do I need a job offer to work in Canada? And the answer is not just as straightforward as yes or no, it's a maybe. Depending on what country you're from and how old you are, the first option that we always try to look at is International Experience Canada. And this is most notably, people know it as working holidays. So if you are a citizen or hold a passport from a certain country, and if you're in a certain age bracket, for some countries it's between the ages of 18 and 30, and others it's between 18 and 35, you might be eligible to apply for an open work permit without having a job. Because under the International Experience Canada program, there's working holiday, young professionals, and co-op programs. If you're eligible for the working holiday, you do not have to have a job offer in place. You would just submit basically an expression of interest and wait to be selected. Once you're selected, you get an open work permit and depending on the country you're from, the duration of that permit could be anywhere from six months up to 24 months. So if you wanna find out if your country or your country of nationality is eligible for this working holiday, just click in the link below and we've got the full list of all of the countries that can participate as well as how old you need to be to participate in the program and what the duration of your open work permit would be. Now with an open work permit, that means that you can work for any employer anywhere in Canada and it's not employer specific. So you can change employers while you are in Canada. The other programs like the Young Professional and the Co-op, you have to have a job offer in place, but the employer doesn't necessarily have to do that labor market impact assessment. And if you don't know what that is, we are going to explain it in a few minutes. So with the International Experience Canada, if you are eligible, that is typically the easiest way to get a work permit for Canada. But unfortunately, because we know not everybody qualifies for that program, we're going to look at the other requirements for people who want to get a work permit for Canada. So if you're not eligible for the International Experience Canada program, typically the first step is going to be to get a job offer from a Canadian employer. Now, when you're applying to these jobs, you might see that a lot of employers say you have to have status before applying. Unfortunately, there's no specific jobs that are just tailored to bringing in foreign nationals. It's about finding that employer who needs somebody and they couldn't find a Canadian because maybe there's a shortage in that skill set, or maybe that specific area, there's just nobody who applied to the job. In any case, if you get this job offer, depending on the company and the size, typically they're gonna have to do what's called a labor market impact assessment. And what this means is they would need to show that they advertise that position in Canada and that they interviewed any Canadian citizens or permanent residents that applied to that position and that either nobody applied or of the ones that did, they didn't have the skills necessary to fill the position or they couldn't be trained quite quickly to fill that position. If that's the case, then they can apply for a labor market impact assessment to bring in a foreign worker to fill that position. Now, if you want to apply for a work permit, you would have to have that positive labor market impact assessment as part of your work permit application. So this means if that employer went through all of that paperwork to do the labor market impact assessment, if it was refused, you wouldn't be eligible to apply for the work permit. Now, some companies, depending on how large they are and if they're constantly transferring people in and out of Canada, there might be a reciprocal agreement that they can avoid the labor market impact assessment, but this is quite rare. Now, the next one that we're gonna look at is for intercompany transfers. This would be if you were working for a company in your home country or another country for one year or longer, and they had a Canadian affiliate branch or a subsidiary in Canada, and your company wanted to transfer you to that branch subsidiary or affiliate in Canada. Now, to qualify for these though, you'd have to be in a senior management position or a specialized knowledge role. So not everybody is eligible for the intercompany transfer just because their company does have that office branch or subsidiary in Canada. It's also about the position that you hold. So if you wanna see what qualifies as a senior manager or a specialized knowledge, just click in the description below and we've got those definitions for you so you can see if you would qualify for that or not. Now, the next option for a work permit is for people who 
They still need a labor market impact assessment, but the companies don't necessarily have to advertise the position to a Canadian. And this is most notably right now for certain IT positions where there's a shortage across Canada. So this is the global skills um, program. And with this, there is a short list of occupations that are basically exempt from the advertising requirement of the labor market impact assessment, but the employer still has to submit that labor market impact assessment. Now, keep in mind that application costs the employer $1,000 Canadian. So that is, you know, one of the main things the employer might take into consideration when doing this. But if you want to see if your occupation is on that list, again, click in the description below. And we've listed the occupations that are exempt from the advertising, but there are minimum um, salaries that you need to be earning. So you'll want to check that below as well. Now, depending on what country you're from and what your citizenship is, there's other certain reciprocal agreements in place between Canada and other countries, such as United States, Mexico, and Euro European Union. So what this means is, most notably, uh, we'll start with the North American Free Trade Agreement. There are special programs for what we call NAFTA professionals and also NAFTA investors. With the professionals, there's a list of occupations that Canada and America and Mexico have deemed to be professional qualifications. So if you had a job offer from a Canadian employer under one of these job titles, you could then apply for your work permit. You wouldn't have to have a labor market impact assessment and the employer would not have to pay that thousand dollars to go through that process. You would just have to have the job offer and the proof that you meet the requirements for your occupation. So what this means is uh, with some occupations, like an engineer, they would want to see that you have a full engineering degree. Or with nurses, they would want to see that you had already been pre-approved for a nursing license in the province you're going to be working in. So if you want to find out which professions qualify as a NAFTA professional, just click in the description below and we've got that list there for you, as well as what qualifications or licensing you might require to meet the requirements under the NAFTA professional. Now, the next one that we're going to be looking at is I'm just going to be a bit more general here because these agreements are quite specific. But as I said, there's certain other international agreements in places with other countries, such as European Union, Peru, where certain people, certain professionals, certain intercompany transfers can come into Canada for a temporary period to work. And this would be based on your work experience. And in most of these cases, you would have to prove that you have a Canadian client that you're coming to do work for. So if you want to see if your country has one of these agreements in place with Canada, also just click in the description below and we're going to list the different international agreements that Canada has. So you can see if your country is one of the ones that is participating in those programs. Now, the Canadian government website sometimes is a little bit confusing. People find one page that talks about open work permits. And depending on how you got there, you may or may not know that open work permits are not just there for anybody to apply for. Open work permits right now are typically for people under the international experience class for working holidays, people who are the spouse of a Canadian student or a Canadian worker. So anybody who is getting a work permit for Canada, if it's in a certain skilled occupation, their spouse is entitled to an open work permit. And anyone who's going to study in Canada, again, depending on their program of study, their spouse would be entitled to an open work permit. And the other types of open work permit right now is most notably for spouses of Canadian citizens or permanent residents who have applied under the In Canada class. So if you're being sponsored to Canada under the In Canada class as a spouse or a common law partner, as part of that initial application for permanent residence, you can also include an application for an open work permit. Now that open work permit won't be issued to you immediately. They first need to assess the sponsor to make sure that they're eligible to sponsor you under that program. And once the sponsor has been approved, then they will start processing that open work permit for you. Now those processing times can vary quite a bit depending on how many files they have and right now during recording we're still dealing with the COVID um, pandemic so that is delaying applications and we've seen these open work permits take up to seven months to issue so it's not something that is incredibly quick right now. 
So thanks for tuning in. And those are a basic overview of the different ways that you can work in Canada. We have also listed just some common job search sites, but again, they are in the description below, but they're not specific to foreign workers. So these are jobs that anyone can apply to, but they're not just specifically foreign workers. So you are gonna be competing obviously against for Canadians for jobs at all times. So thanks for tuning in. And if you wanna stay up to date with all the Canadian news immigration updates, just subscribe to our channel. And thanks for tuning in. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, just Click below.